What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the 2020 iPad one week later. So a few weeks ago, Apple debuted two new iPads, the newly designed sexy looking iPad Air, which I'm itching to get my hands on, and the quote unquote new 2020 8th generation iPad, an iterative update of Apple's cheapest iPad offering. Now the iPad Air isn't available for pre-order quite yet. We should expect that sometime in October. And as underwhelming as the eighth generation iPad may seem, I've been using it over the past week, and I'm convinced that this is probably the best value iPad by a far margin for most users. So today I wanna to go over the top three things about this tablet that I've enjoyed the most. But at the end, I also wanna talk about two limitations that really can't be ignored. Now before we get into the review, if you're into checking out the latest consumer tech products before you buy them, or if you're just a tech head like me, I make a video like this every single week, so make sure to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to know when a new JSL review is out and you don't miss anything. And real quick, a shameless plug, if you're an iPad junkie like me and you're looking for accessories to really beef up your user experience, be sure to check out the reviews I made that go over some of the best accessories for the iPad. Links will be in the description down below. Okay, the first thing I love about the 2020 iPad is its compatibility. Despite this being significantly more affordable than the other iPads out there, there's not many concessions when it comes to leveraging all the iPad has to offer. With the leaps Apple has made with iPad OS, you can take advantage of all the new features and really turn your iPad into a product beast. You have access to all the amazing apps specifically designed for the iPad without any limitations. Features like split screen works great, everything is buttery smooth, and you can even take advantage of some of iOS 14's newest features like Scribble, which could be particularly useful if you're all about handwriting on the iPad. You can also use the first generation Apple Pencil on this iPad. Kind of sad that it doesn't support the second generation, but it supports a lot of third-party pencils like the one I have here, and it works really well. And probably the best compatibility feature on this thing is the built-in smart connector that you see on all the high-end iPads. This allows you to leverage accessories like the Apple Smart Keyboard, a dated keyboard no doubt, but one that still works really well and dramatically increases the capability of your iPad. And best of all, it connects using the smart connector, which means no pairing, no internal battery, and no latency when you type. Plus, you can take advantage of all the amazing accessibility features the new OS has to offer, one of them being mouse support. You can easily pair a wireless mouse to the iPad, and when you pair it with a keyboard, you have a setup that can very much act as a laptop replacement. Now to me, I prefer a trackpad over a mouse, especially as it gives me the ability to take advantage of the gestures that are baked into the UI. And my all-time favorite accessory for this iPad has got to be the Logitech Combo Case. It's a case that has a detachable keyboard that again takes advantage of the iPad Smart Connector, but it also has a built-in trackpad that works extremely well. And even though this is far from being something like the iPad Pro and talking specs, honestly, you can have just as robust of an experience using this iPad, which is amazing considering the price difference. At the end of the day, the potential this entry-level tablet has in terms of capability is really impressive, and I love that it can take advantage of almost everything its more expensive siblings can at a way more affordable price. Okay, the second thing I love about the 2020 iPad is its performance. The one and really only significant update Apple made this year is the implementation of the A12 Bionic processor. And though it's completely internal, it's a very welcomed upgrade. Last year's model was rocking the dated A10 processor, which honestly still worked great, but with the upgrade to the way more powerful A12, you not only get better performance in day-to-day -day usage, but also more runway in terms of lifespan. Now when it comes to day-to-day, -to -day, the iPad is really a content-consuming powerhouse, and you get a very elegant, stutter-free user experience. Even when doing more spec-intensive activities, such as editing photos, or for me making thumbnails, the iPad handles it like a champ, and I'm amazed at how much this tablet can do. You're not going to get the ultra-low latency using the Apple Pencil like on the iPad Pros, but it has gotten much better, and it's still totally usable to create art with. And if you're into gaming, man, this iPad delivers. Spec intensive gaming is silky smooth, all the controls are responsive and lag free, and it's such an enjoyable experience on this large 10.2 inch display. And to add to the list of accessories I mentioned before that's amazing for this iPad, you can pair up a Bluetooth, Xbox, or PlayStation controller, and it really takes your gaming experience up to the next level. And again, really impressed at how well the controller works, there's very little latency, and the ability to take advantage of such a familiar controller has really changed my perspective on mobile gaming, and it speaks to the transformative nature that iPadOS really brings to the table. Overall, even though the upgrades to the 2020 iPad are minuscule to say the least, it's good to know that this thing is ultra powerful, and it's reassuring that this thing will likely last you a long time without any issues. Okay, the last thing I love about the 2020 iPad is not exactly a feature, but in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons to buy this tablet Tablet, and that's the price. The base model comes in at just $329, and when considering all the points I just made about how robust and powerful this device is, it's no doubt incredible in terms of value. 
Again, there's not much concession here when it comes to taking advantage of iPad features, even though there is a significant cost difference between this and the more advanced models. You're getting a ton with this very reasonable price tag because there is so much you can do with this thing, and you don't sacrifice anything when it comes to quality control or reliability. If you're a value shopper like I am, this is for sure the iPad you should get, and I can almost assure you that you won't be disappointed. So yes, this tablet is great, but it's not all perfect. And one thing about the new 2020 iPad that has left a bad taste in my mouth is that the base model only comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Dude, it's 2020. The bare minimum should be 64 gigabytes, especially when considering just how capable this tablet is. And look, it's not an absolute deal breaker going with 32. You'd be fine if you're just looking to consume content, but if you're looking to do stuff like edit high-res photos or videos, or play a ton of direct downloaded games, you're gonna run into some storage issues rather quickly. You'll need to have some sort of external hard drive or cloud storage support handy if you wanna go with the base model. Now you can upgrade the iPad to 128 gigabytes of storage for an additional $100. It's a good way to go, especially if if you're a power user, but it does chip away at the value proposition with the increased price. And the storage limitation really speaks to the larger and more pervasive issue with the 2020 iPad, and that's the dated design. I mean, you still have the gaping forehead and chin that makes this look eerily similar to the original iPad debuted a decade ago. You still have that non-laminated display with the air gap between the glass. You still have Apple's older Touch ID system with the home button on the front. You get the standard 60 hertz refresh rate. The display is just okay from a resolution standpoint. And something that annoyed me more than I thought is the single firing speaker on the bottom. It's so bad compared to the newer models. Now to be fair, these are all gripes within the context that this is still an Apple device, which means that it's built to extremely high standards when it comes to quality, but this is definitely the iPhone SE of iPads. It's an amalgamation of parts Apple has at their disposal that they're Frankensteining together to keep the cash machine going. And look, to me, that's not even really a bad thing. For one, that's how they keep the price of this tablet low. And two, most if not all the cons here are cosmetic. If you can get past the dated look and feel, what the iPad itself can do is extraordinary. And much like the iPhone SE, I could see why this would be quite a popular device for a lot of folks out there. But hey, that's just me, and I want to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think of the new 2020 iPad? And where do you rank it among all the iPads that are available today? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. It really helps me out. If you guys have any questions about the 2020 iPad, leave them down in the comments, and I'll be sure to get to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.